Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. Every traffic violator has his own personal excuse for breaking the law. But the Highway Patrol is trained to recognize the difference between excuses and reasons. Usually, the reasons involve lack of judgment, carelessness. But on October 9th, Officer Len Dorsey spotted a driver exceeding the speed limit for another reason. Fear motivated by guilt. Hope you got a license. May I see it, please? Just 17, huh? If you keep cruising at that altitude, you might not see 18. I expect you got a reason for going so fast. No alibis? Well, you can talk, can't you? Yes, sir. No alibis. Well, that's refreshing. What are you doing with all these accessories? Highway Patrol, Sergeant Betts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. We'll be there right away. Dr. Miller. Right. What's the matter? You look sick. Len Dorsey's out of action. He's at the county hospital. May not live. What happened? Ran down. Somebody ran him down. Officer Dorsey. Just fair, no more. The human body just isn't built to have an automobile roll over it. He's young, though. He might make it. Sorry I can't be more optimistic. Well, did he talk at all? No, he's unconscious. You might ask young Elliot over there. That's cool. The boy who brought him in, Grant Elliot. Wait a minute, son. Bye. I'm Dan Matthews. I'd like to thank you for finding Officer Dorsey. I didn't find him. I hit him. All right, tell us about it. I was speeding. That's the first thing. I was speeding, and he went after me. I'd never had a ticket before. And, well, I guess I was nervous. I don't suppose I knew what I was doing, but when he went back to copy the license number down, I started the truck and... You hit him? No, not like that. I didn't just set out to hit him. Not like that. How, then? I just jammed him to gear, took off. It wasn't until he screamed and I felt the bump that I realized I'd put the truck in reverse. When I saw him, he was under the wheels. I thought I'd killed him. Why didn't you run? How could I run? I hit him. What's your name, son? Grant Elliott. Where do you live? Victory Road on a farm. Any family? 
My father, we live alone. Sometimes I stay in the city with my aunt. The truck's in your father's name, I suppose. Aren't you tell him I'd like to have you drive into my office tomorrow around 4 o'clock? That's the highway patrol. You mean you can go now? Mr. Matthews. Yeah, well. That officer. Look, you did everything you could. Thanks. We'll take it up tomorrow. Suppose he panics again and decides not to turn up tomorrow. I wouldn't worry about him, Betts. I think the kid's all right. Been, Grant, some girl maybe? You you shouldn't have taken the truck like that while I was resting. Could have waited till I woke up, couldn't it? Look at me, boy. Now don't get in one of them moods. What's it all about? I drove to Wharton. That's all, huh? Just drove to Wharton. You're up to something, Grant. What is it? Come on, come on, speak up. All right. There was an accident. What do you mean? Not the truck. I ran a man down, Dad. A highway patrolman who was giving me a ticket. You're being smart, aren't you? His name's Dorsey. I hit him by mistake. Mistake? Tell that to the highway patrol. I already have. Grant, this really happened? Sure it happened. It's all there, Dad. They didn't get to it? Only Dorsey. It's what caused the accident. Tonight, when I noticed that tarpon, saw it was there, I jumped in the truck and started home. Don't you understand? He asked me about all those accessories. I got scared. He thought they were stolen. I thought they were stolen. You don't think your dad stole those auto parts? But a whole truck full of parts. They must have come from someplace. Suppose that patrolman tells him about it. Suppose they ask me how it got there. Forget it, Grant. Leave it alone. They, they let you go, didn't they? They want me back tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And they want you to come with me. Me? What do they want me for? You're my father, aren't you? At least you can explain how the stuff got there. You can't explain it, can't you, Dad? Can't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I can explain it all right. Dad, you did steal that stuff, didn't you? You're calling me a thief. You, you got no right. Listen, listen to me, Grant. You don't know what it's like. You, you got your school, your friends, you're just a kid growing up. You, you don't know what it's like to run a farm like this, never having money to buy the things you need. Sure. Like the new truck. Truck farmers need new trucks every year, don't they? It's not just a truck. It's, it's well, it's been a bad summer. I, I'm in debt up to here. Grant, this is the first time I ever did anything like this. I, I'm not a thief, Grant. I, I did something foolish, I know, and I, I, I need your help. Bad. Sure. So you can steal another truck full of accessories? No, no, no. Forget all about this. Sure. Just like that. What do I do when they ask me about the stuff? What do I do then? Deny it. It, it, it means five or ten years in jail. I'm, I'm still your father, Grant. You've got to help me. Dad, I... Well, what can I do? If that patrolman tells him... Deny it. It's just your word against his. But he's a cop. It's still just one man's word against another's. Deny anything they ask you tomorrow. Deny it, deny it, deny it. I know it's not a good thing. I, I made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. You can't sell me down the river just because I'm a human being. I need your help, son. I, I need your help real bad. I need all the help you can give me. Morning. Bet you're Matthews. That's right. Charles Elliott, the boy's dad. Is Grant around? Sure, he's getting ready for school. Hey, Grant! Grant, come on out here! That officer, is he any worse? I just saw him. He'll live. You hear that, boy? Mr. Matthews says the officer's going to be all right. That's wonderful. Grant, I let you go last night because I thought you were honest. I'm not so sure right now. What about those automobile accessories? About... Sir? The back of your truck was full of auto accessories. 
And those who found them, you couldn't account for them. I'd like to have you count to me right now. There weren't any. Dorsey says there were. Then he's, he's wrong. I'd like to believe that. The truck's in the shed if you want to see it. I'll show it to you. I don't want to see it. I want you to tell me the truth right now. Hold it, mister. Uh, I think Grant's been pretty straight about all this. If I were you, I'd put my trust in him before I'd believe some officer who just had his brain scrambled in an accident. That officer was trained to remember everything he sees. Maybe he just saw more. You don't make any sense. Well, suppose I had some youngster put me in the hospital. Suppose he and I were the only ones who knew how it happened. I got feeling sorry for myself. It'd be pretty easy to cook up something that had, uh, oh, say, let me get even without getting out of bed. Some little thing, some simple thing like automobile accessories. Of he's still in bad shape, but he hasn't lost his sense of values. thefts involving automotive parts. All in the last few months within a radius of 50 miles. Service stations, small shops, same M.O. Yeah, I know. Haven't seen anybody, they don't know anything. Just nothing. Here's the latest one. Take a look at the date on it. October the 9th, Springfield Super Service. Uh, There's not much to go on. Take another look. Huh? Some alert old lady got a partial license number. Sam 712. Sam 712. Well, that's a start, anyway. See what you can dig up. Wait a minute. Let me see the Dorsey accident report. Right here. Take a look at the license number. Looks like I was wrong. It is the type. How do you want to handle that? Grand larceny, handled like any grand larceny case. <laughs> What is it? Is Grant Early at home? Yeah, I'll call him. Grant, come on out here. What's this all about? Our appointment wasn't until 4 o'clock. The boy just got home from school. I'd like you to come to the station with me. Why? Suspicion of grand larceny. must govern his actions by evidence, not instinct. In Grant Elliott's case, it was instinctive to think of him as innocent, but the evidence seemed to prove otherwise. How does that sheriff feel to you? All right. I'm sorry to hear that. You know who sat in that chair before you? Murderers, thieves, pickpockets, blackmailers. And now you. You're accused of grand larceny. If they convict you, you'll get ten years. Do you know why we're accusing you, Grant? All right, let me read you these reports. October the 9th. Greenfield Super Service Station burglarized. Auto accessories. Value of merchandise, 
$536. Here's another item. October 9th. Witness identified truck owned by your father at scene of crime. October the 9th. Patrolman Dorsey stopped that truck on the highway with Grant Elliott driving. The back was filled with auto accessories. Anything you want to tell me, Grant? circumstantial evidence, but it can convict you. So speak up. Because if you're guilty, we're going to find out for sure. If you're innocent, we want to help you prove it. So come on, tell me. If you don't tell me, we're going to start questioning all of your friends and relatives. No. No what? No friends and relatives? Which ones don't you want us to question? How about that aunt of yours that lives in the city? How about your father? No. Why don't you want us to question your father? Well, you know how he is. He always starts arguments. That's not the real reason, is it? Okay. That's Book Elliot. All right, Grant, let's go. Come on. Grant. How often do you come to town? Not much. Just to see my aunt once in a while. Who brings the produce to town? Well, usually my father delivers. How often? Depends on the crops. Okay, that's all. Get me the address of the produce place and meet me at the car. Right. A dozen small-time robberies within a three-month period, all occurring within a 50-mile radius. And right in the middle of that area was the produce warehouse. The traffic manager knew the Elliots all right, and his records revealed the dates on which the elder Elliot delivered his produce. According to those records, Grant Elliot's father just happened to be in town the day following every single robbery on the list. The next step was to find out if he was delivering anything more than fruits and vegetables. Pawn shops, surplus stores, and junk dealers were covered. A check was run on every auto supply shop in the area that bought stock from independent operators. All suspected fences were questioned, and their purchase records, such as they were, were checked. One of those suspected was a former petty thief, Ralph Yates. Well, what can I do for you? Oh. Highway Patrol. That's right. I'm interested in the auto supplies in your window. Anything in particular? Yeah, the price. You sell cheaper than anybody else. Low markup, quick turnover. And a good buy now and then. Well, bankrupt stock, odd lots. And stolen merchandise? Officer, I don't know what you mean. Did you ever buy anything from a man by the name of Charlie Elliott? Never heard of him. Got invoices for all your stock purchases? No. A lot of times I pay cash. There's nothing illegal in that. No. Did you make any cash purchases yesterday, the 10th? Yes, I did. I don't remember the guy, though. Did you ever buy from him before? Got a bad memory for faces. In other words, you couldn't identify him. Live and let live. That's my motto. You got a record of all your cash purchases? Yes, you can look for yourself. How about uh, September 7th? Did you anything for that date? Yes. What'd you pay him? $336. September 20th. Mm, $500 even. September 28th. Mm hmm. $675. Hey, this radio builds itself up a dandy bank account. Anything else? All right, Yates, we may be back. Okay, anytime, gentlemen, anytime at all. Thanks. Kids, Edison. Now, if we can prove Elliot guilty, we'll have no trouble with Yates. You want to try the bank next time? You need a court order to look at the depositor's account. Tell you what, you take care of that. Drop me at headquarters and pick me up there when you're through. Right.
I checked the record with the bank cashier. Only one small account. Not even one large deposit? How about a savings account in his name or his son's name? Bank cashier says he knows all the depositors. Nothing at all. No safety deposit box either. But he had a suggestion. Yeah, what was that? He asked if we tried express check agencies. You know, that's the best suggestion anybody's had all day. Charles Elliott. Charles Elliott. Charles Elliott. And you say you never heard the name before? I told you I got a bad memory for names. You've written that name at least a dozen times in these express checks. I don't remember the name. I don't remember the face. I don't remember anything about it. It's no crime to not have a good memory. No, that's right. But just in case you don't remember the evidence, we'll have it with us, if you don't mind. as a cover-up. Sell his stuff to Yates for cash, then get his express checks. You know, that might be the motive. He might be pretty far in debt. Is this evidence any good? No, as it stands, right now it isn't. But it might help to make old man Elliot talk. I'm not gonna let the kid take the rap for his old man. I think the kid is innocent. I'm not gonna let him come to trial. Have them both in my office at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mr. Elliot. That truck farm of yours, is it successful financially, I mean? You know it isn't. Uh, I'm a poor man. I, I've worked hard for everything I own. Listen, if you're trying to establish some kind of thing to make my son a thief... No. Where do you have your bank accounts? At the Wharton Bank. But I told you, I'm a poor man. Mm -hmm. Got all your money on deposit at the Wharton Bank? Say, what is this? I'm not on trial here. No, that's very true. You're not. But in view of the jam that your son is in, I thought you wouldn't mind answering a few questions. That is, unless you have something to hide, of course. Tell me, you ever do any business with Yates General Store? Yates? Well, I... I, I mean buying and selling. Buying and selling items such as these. Those checks were issued to you by Yates. He also sells automotive supplies. He admits to buying large quantities for cash. The dates of his purchases coincide with those of the recent burglaries. This has nothing to do with me. What are you trying to do? Oh, I'm just stating a few facts that may or may not concern you, that's all. Such as the dates and the amounts of the burglaries, Yates purchases, the express checks, they coincide all the way down the line. This is a lot of foolishness. Uh, anyone can buy express checks. There's lots of Charles Elliott's in this state. You'll have to do better than that, Dad. Grant. Grant, you, you don't think... Uh, I had anything to do with those auto supplies. What are you trying to do? Turn my own son against me? You've already done that, Mr. Elliot. I've been on this patrol a long time. I've seen evil and ugly things, but it's the first time I've seen a father allow his son to go to trial for crimes that he committed. Don't listen to him, Grant. You, it isn't true. You know it isn't true. Grant, where were you at the time of the Greenfield burglary? 2.15, October the 9th. I... I forget. Let's see if your father remembers. Where was he? Uh, how should I know? I, I can't follow Grant around. He was in school. We checked the records. He hasn't been absent one day this semester. You've allowed guilt to be placed on your son's shoulders. Boy, that's something. You've got to look at yourself in the mirror every day. If you've got a confession to make, I suggest you make it right now before you hurt this boy any more than you have already. Well, I, I thought he'd get off for sure. I, I didn't think he had anything on him. I, I thought he was sure to get off. Then you confess? I don't know what to do, Mr. Matthews. He's still my father. Yeah, I know. You remembered it, but he didn't. But you're young. He's young. And when it's all straightened out, he'll have learned something. Come on, kid. We'll go visit your aunt.
police case handled by the Highway Patrol is a very exciting one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the careless driver isn't driving his car. He's aiming it. This is Bradley Crawford saying see you next week.